Welcome back to World of News. I hope you're all having a fantastic day. So today, I'm going to do something I should have done about a month ago. We're going to cover all the suggestions that were passed in the month of December for 2020. These are the final suggestions passed to developers in the year of 2020. And some of them are kind of interesting. So be sure to hit that subscribe button. We're starting off with the most interesting ones. In fact, all of the aircraft ones, I don't even think I need to read the suggestions for because you guys will know these names. For the US was the F-15A. For the Japanese was the F-15J. For the Russian was the MiG-25, for the Germans was the MiG-23ML, for the French was the Mirage F5, for Italy was the Tornado, and for China is the J-82. Generally, I find this quite strange, as we had had some more advanced aircraft passed to the developers in the past, I believe in October was the MiG-23 for the Russians, to have the entire aircraft section be all Gen 3 and 4 aircraft is a little sus. Yeah, I use a dead meme, get over it. This brings up a whole lot of questions on why are certain things sent to the developers, while some are not. Some of the suggestions here are from 2018, so it's not just that, oh, the suggestion was filed correctly, otherwise it would have been sent back in 2018. Another possibility is a personal interest of the one who is sending the things to the developers. Perhaps he's taking an interest and is hoping to get some modern jets in-game, so he's prioritizing sending those to the developers. However, that would seem like a very unprofessional method of doing things, just leaving your suggestions from the community to you up to the whims of one mad lad. Another possibility is it, it's going the other way around. The devs are asking whoever's in charge of sending suggestions to them to look for suggestions that fit a theme, perhaps Generation 3 and 4 jet fighters, and which he had fulfilled. Well, the J-8 is like an extended Gen 2, but China didn't really have anything else till the J-10, at least to my understanding. I haven't looked too much far into Cold War Chinese jets. But anyways, if that last case is the scenario, it makes you question a whole lot exactly what kind of game are we going to be going into in this later year. Last year, we did have a whole lot of rumors going around of MiG-23s and F-14s, as well as I said earlier, some other third generation aircraft being sent to developers. So could we see some pretty intense and interesting things coming in the next patch? I am not so strong on that this time around. Really what I'm anticipating for the next patch is more Chinese vehicles, maybe a Corsair too. The greatest possibility I can see for more improved aircraft is maybe a MiG-23 because that thing's not so great compared to F-4s that we currently have in game, though the Russians don't exactly need a new aircraft at the moment. I would be hoping for some sort of German top tier jet as their current MiG-21 isn't really cutting it and a 10.0 F-104 is also not cutting it. So maybe F4F, but we're gonna have to wait and see. There's like no rumors going around at the moment. Really, to see exactly what we could anticipate for the rest of this year, wait for the April Fools event. If they do anything modern jet-ish, maybe we could anticipate some more modern jets to come in a later patch. But to be short about this segment, no, I don't necessarily think that because modern jets were past developers that we're going to get modern jets soon. However, it would be evidenced in an argument for it, but not a very strong one. But if we see any modern jet stuff in the April Fool's event, then that could be used for a much stronger argument that they are indeed coming. I'm not going to dwell on the specifics of each individual jet. I, you guys probably know more about them than I do, and I don't think reading a blip out of the suggestion is really going to inform you a whole lot. Modern jets, basically. So let's get onto the tank, starting with the United States. The suggestion being passed to developers this time around is the M2 Bradley, which is like the M3 Bradley, but not. It's, I believe this one was more for troop transport than whatever the M3 was used for. So they have the same armaments, same ATGMs, and same gun. Though, what could be some interesting uses for this? Perhaps an event vehicle, you could get the M2 Bradley to go along with your M3 Bradley. The Bradley isn't exactly a super powerful vehicle, and I do know that some people would like, even though it's the same vehicle, to have the M2 over the M3. Another possibility, though, is to add the M2, but as a different variant with a different armament, as the person who made the suggestion actually uploaded a number of images of the vehicle with different stuff on it. One of them looks like it has some sort of anti-air missiles, so that could be another interesting idea, other variant of the Bradley, though I still think having just a M2 Bradley as an event vehicle would be pretty cool. Hey, you can even just folder it with the M3. Suggestion passed on for Germany was the Sutton Panzer Lucius, which is a 1970s German IFV. It had eight wheels and was armed with a Rheinmetall Mark 20 RH202 20mm cannon, the same one on the KPZ-70. Being a wheeled vehicle, on stats it was able to get up to some pretty high speeds, up to 100 kilometers per hour. However, because Gaijin doesn't know how cars work, it probably won't get anywhere near there. And armor-wise, is able to put up a fight against 20mm 
and their cannons. Probably around like 50 millimeters or you know 20 at good angles. Generally it looks like a pretty interesting vehicle however it has no ATGMs so you can only use that cannon and you can penetrate a good amount with that cannon however Gaijin's reasoning would probably put it so low on the tech tree that it would be another R3 especially if it was able to get around that 100 kilometers an hour. Now as much as it pains me to turn down a, another amphibious vehicle I would say I don't want this one in game because I don't want more R3s. Definitely don't want German to have one. Germans already have enough toys. Russia's suggestion was also a spag the 6x6 Ural ZS32 II which is a flatbed truck with some rapid fire machine guns in the back. 23 millimeter cannons with a thousand rounds per minute per gun so 2,000 rounds per minute total but only 50 round in belts. Generally I think this vehicle would actually fit really well between the ZSU 37 and the ZSU 57 II. In fact I'm sure plenty of people would take it in place of the 57 II. Even though the 57 II is really good at shooting down planes for whatever bizarre reason. And I'm pretty sure China also used this configuration so it would definitely help their tech tree out as they've been running low on spags for quite some time. But personally I feel like the Russians should have this setup but on a BTR as if they did have it on a BTR. BTRs are just cooler looking. For the UK the suggestion passed was essentially the Type 75 but for the British. The Gun Equipment 155mm L331 AS90 which is a British self-propelled gun 155 millimeters that fired standard NATO projectiles which include rocket assisted things. I'm pretty sure I had an auto loader though it might have just been an assisted loader but it was capable of firing three rounds in 10 seconds though the typical fire rate was six rounds per minute. You could go around 54 kilometers per hour with a 660 horsepower engine at 2800 RPMs. Armor wise it could stand up against 14.5 AP from the front but only 762 AP from the sides. Generally it is just the same as the Type 75 the Japanese tree. Only real difference is while I couldn't find the exact muzzle velocity of this gun the gun is based off the FH70 which had a muzzle velocity of 827 which is I believe higher than the Type 75 though not by much. The real question comes down to what kind of animation could it shoot? There was no exact saying on this is the rounds that it shot just saying that it could fire any standard nano animation but that's kind of standard with all nations that are part of NATO that use 25 millimeter guns including the Type 75. I don't actually know if they're part of NATO but the Type 75 can shoot also standard 155 millimeter NATO rounds. So just because it's capable of shooting them doesn't mean it did, doesn't mean it should have them in game. Or should it? I don't know. It'd be interesting to have a cannon that could shoot copperheads. A very bizarre ATGM tank. If you're wondering what a copperhead is, I believe it's a type of snake and they'd like put them all into a big old shell and then shoot it out of the gun and it would like have a shotgun of snakes at the enemy. Kind of sounds like a war crime really. Japan's sent suggestion is a very simple one. The Type 74 Mod G Late Service as it's being called is essentially the Type 74 G Kai without side skirts stretched the B in the main tree to give Japan a 9.0 tank in their tech tree. As apparently the side skirts were only fitted onto the first prototype of the G and honestly as the Japanese tech tree currently stands they could actually kind of use a G in the main tech tree as well the tree is pretty slim around those areas but also they don't really have any thermals in their other vehicles so it would hit two stones with one bird and then after that you could have like 9.7 or 9.3 or 10.0 or whatever filled with prototypes of the Type 90 when Gaijin finally decides that those exist. China's suggestion is a definite need the Type 95 SPAAG which is a radar guided spag with four 25 millimeter guns and four QW2 IR guided missiles. The guns fire 600 to 800 rounds per barrel so a combined total of 2400 to 3200 rounds per minute. However each barrel only has 250 rounds or a thousand total so you don't have a whole lot of lead to spray into the sky. Also on top of that the missiles only four of them are IR guided not laser guided so flares could throw them off and so far spags with IR guided missiles haven't been that effective especially of helicopters that are far off the battle area so unlike other missile spags I would have to suggest this one to be a bit lower maybe only 10-0 similar to the Italian one but China definitely needs more spags especially a SAM for top tier now that they have a top tier tank and I think this is like the only one that would actually fit maybe some other bizarre creations out there but this is like the most generic one another possibility is there's some images of it without the missiles so maybe we could have it actually twice in the tree one at 8-0 without the missiles and then 10-0 with 
missiles. But anyway, speaking of the Italian spec, the next vehicle sent to the developers for Italy was the OF-40 Thetis. Which, to explain to you, I'm actually just going to read the blip in the suggestion, because it, it's kind of a funny read. The OF-40 Thetis was an experimental OF-40 that had access to the Thetis thermal sight night vision, along with what seems extra armor around the tank. The story begins where the Italian government wanted to evaluate if adding the system to the Leo 1 or OF-40 would be beneficial in the long run. Ultimately, it was shut down and not put into service due to possible upgrades that were planned for both MBTs. The zoom is disabled to either be a zoom of times 4 and times 12 or smaller range of times 2 and times 4. However, the story doesn't end there. An Italian amusement park known as Mirabilandia had supposedly bought slash rented the OF-40 Thetis with an extra armor to use it for their show known as Scuola di Polizia Police School from 2006 to 2008 in which members of the Italian military police would demonstrate driving and how they could construct raids. There is a part in the act where there would be several bad guys lifting off in a helicopter. This is when the OF-40 would drive towards the building and shoot its cannon at the helicopter and blow it up. In 2008, it was no longer used. Now its fate lies inside the Otomare factory. And apparently there is another one that has already been restored is on display outside some garage somewhere. And so the details of this vehicle outside of that little paragraph is that it is just an OF-40, not an OF-40 Mark IIA, just an regular OF-40. And while it looks like there is an increase to the armor, it, the tank does look a bit thicker on the side of the turret, we don't know how much thicker it actually is. Though I'm sure if Gadget were to put the vehicle into the game, it wouldn't take a whole lot of research to figure that out. Now, the question is, if they were added, what exactly would you do with this vehicle? You couldn't just make it a modular upgrade of the current OF-40, because the current thing, I believe, is like 7.7, and giving it 7.7 tank thermals, will it be the best 7.7 tank? However, to make it a separate vehicle in the tech tree, it'd be kind of strange to go from a vehicle without thermals to a vehicle with thermals back to a vehicle without thermals, the OF-40 Mark IIA. However, I do think it still could be folded with the original OF-40 and put it at 8.0. Another possibility is to make it a event vehicle or maybe premium, though there currently already is an OF-40 that is premium, that'd be a little redundant. An event vehicle would be interesting because then you could have the weird decals you have on it, though it'd still be kind of disappointing because I do feel like the Italians could use something around 8.0 that has some thermals. But personally, I really want the decals that are on this tank. The leopard one would be very helpful when labeling my tanks to make sure the enemy knows exactly what they are shooting at. It would also be really great to be able to attach a police decal to your tank and arrest all the R3s for breaking the speed limit. For the French was another interesting vehicle, the M47 Patton II CN105 F1. No, that is not a M47 designed for Formula 1 racing. That is the name of a cannon. Essentially, this is just a Patton II with a French cannon in it. Same one on the AMX 30s. It had 71 rounds for that cannon, as well as an IR spotlight. For battle range, I'd see this thing around 7.3, as it's, of course, the same gun as the AMX 30, but it's a whole lot slower. Personally, though, I think this would be an ideal event vehicle, as it's obviously not some vehicle that should be in the name check tree, and it's not some weird foreign vehicle that you guys can decide. Oh, that should go in France tech tree. It is a bizarre French prototype. Although, I unfortunately doubt that people would grind out the vehicle if it was an event vehicle. So maybe a GE premium, or possibly just throw it into the main tree to take up room. And the final tank being suggested actually was two of them for Sweden, the Panzerbell M39 and M40 Lynx, which both were Swedish armored cars armed with 20mm cannons. One had a Madsen 20mm QF auto cannon, the other one had a Bofors 20mm automatic cannon. While the 20mm Madison apparently did have a modification that was designed to take out enemy tanks, and the Chinese apparently used it at pretty good success against the Japanese, I'm not sure if this is that modification, and as for 20mm Bofors, I'm not sure what kind of Bofors it is. So unless I can get some proper armor penetrations with these guns, I'd have to say that these vehicles might suck too much to be in game. Although even if they did, I personally would actually still like to see them because it'd be kind of fun to drive them around and unsuccessfully blap light vehicles at 1.0. Now on to naval vessels, starting with the United States, we have the USS Wichita, which is a US heavy cruiser armed with nine 8 inch guns and had a belt of 160 millimeters. Besides that, it's a US heavy cruiser. It's just, you know, a bit bigger and meaner than the other ones that we currently have in game. I say why not? Personally though, I'd like to see a Baltimore class in the main tech tree, but we got the Wichita instead, basically the same thing. The German suggestion passed up was a bit more interesting as the BM Deutschland class training cruiser, which is a post-war vessel built mainly for training, but I think it had a typical military use. Armed with four 100 mm guns, the same ones on the Cologne class frigate, and a good number of anti-air as well as anti-submarine missiles, I think they were, or rockets. Though, while considered a cruiser and big enough to be a cruiser, 
I don't think it technically was a cruiser, and only four 100 millimeter guns isn't really a sufficient firepower to be with the other cruisers. I'd say, hey, it's technically just a really big frigate, so why not put the end of the German boat line, but it's a little big. It's bigger than any destroyer. So I'm not exactly sure where you would put it, but it's an interesting vessel and technically German's last cruiser. I wouldn't be upset about being the game. I'm just kind of confused on where it would go. For Russia, the naval suggestion was for the Project 30 BIS and Project 30K, which are further developments of the Project 30 destroyer that we currently already have in game. The K had improved radar. The twin 76 AA was replaced with a twin 50 85 AA, four single Disca turrets were replaced with three twin Disca M2 turrets, as well as a few other changes that wouldn't really affect much in game. For the BIST, it had better structural integrity. The four 37mm AA guns were replaced with four twin 37mm AA guns. Wells added three twin 25mm guns, and the torpedo tubes were increased from two triple mounts to two quintuplet mounts. Besides so that, it's the same as the K. Now, these vessels, being Project 30s, were very outdated by the time they were put in the service, never saw any action because it was after the war, and had pretty boring careers. But dates don't really matter for War Thunder, they'd probably go after the Project 30, as the main armament is the same on all vessels. For the United Kingdom, the suggestion passed was the Revenge Class Battleship. Why did the British always get the cool names for their battleships? I guess Japanese names, they can kind of be cool, sort of, unless you know Japanese, they're like, oh, that's just a rip or somewhere. Like Britain, they're like, yeah, this is the Revenge Class, or this is HMS Invincible. I guess that was a battle cruiser. Dreadnought, that's a cool word like what does that even mean though anyways hms revenge or the revenge class battleships were some pretty cool super dreadnoughts though they had four less guns than the huga really if you want to hear about it go watch drashina full's five minute guide on the missile but as the last tidbit maybe a russian premium battleship for japan the suggestion was for the metsu class destroyer which is a very small destroyer armed with three 127 millimeter guns and a lot of anti-air the best i could see it for is 3-3 there was a number of these vessels built and they seem to see a lot of action, so definitely add them to the tree, but I wouldn't be expecting much from the vessel. For Italy, it was a battleship. I don't care about any of the details of this battleship. Well, one, but we'll get to that. Italy needs a battleship. Currently, they are the only naval tree without any battle cruiser or battleship. Why didn't they get one? Because the Russians needed one, apparently. Well, Russians needed two. But literally, Gaijin could add the Roma class battleship. I won't care. Italy needs something. In fact, Italy needs a whole lot more than just a battleship for the tech tree, but that's another story. Actually, what's funny is is the class that's being suggested here, the Kanti Kavor class battleship after war was acquired by the Russians, so perhaps Russian Frania battleship again. But if we're gonna add Italian battleships, can we get the Italian ironclad battleship Italia Dulio with its four 17.7 inch guns, also known as Armstrong 100 ton guns? I feel like that is what the what naval needs right now. It would be extremely balanced. Trust me, guys. I did the math. It's 100% balanced. Now let's get on to the helicopter line star of the United States is the Bell UH-1N Iroquois, which is like an upgraded Huey. Visually, it looks pretty cool, and I do like Hueys. However, this one does not seem to have any form of ATGMs, only rocket pods and guns, which would make it have to be around 8-0. However, the United States currently already has an 8-0 helicopter. In fact, they have the best 8-0 helicopter, so they don't really need another one, especially a even more advanced one. Generally, it looks cool, but it doesn't really have a place in the game yet. Maybe as an event vehicle or something like that, but would not fit in the tech tree. The next one for Russia is also a terrible idea. It is the Mi-28NM, which if you can't tell, is an upgrade of the Mi-28N. Visually, you can note quite a few differences, but the most notable difference is the radar that it uses, as well as its ordnance. Read some tidbits about the radar from the suggestion. The NO-25E round-the-clock all-weather radar detects both moving and stationary targets and determines their coordinates. This device is capable of simultaneously tracking up to four targets and detecting various obstacles during a flight. It has some other characteristics, but this says the radar can detect targets and dangerous meteorological formations at ranges up to 20 kilometers and 100 kilometers respectively. Or what that says in English is that it can detect targets of 20 kilometers and bad weather up to 100 kilometers away. Now the one making the suggestion seems to think that the radar would be for spotting aircraft, and I guess ground targets, and simply just that. But it's forgetting about the ordnance that he also talked about earlier in the suggestion. It will be equipped to carry 9M 123 Chrysanthema 5 and 9M 127 1 something in Russian VM anti tank missiles. I can't say anything about those other missiles.
missiles, but maybe I should look into them. What I do know about is the Chrysanthemum missiles, which are currently the loadout of the highest battle rating Russian anti-tank tank, the Chrysanthemum, which uses radar to guide those missiles. You can fire two at once, one lit guided by where you point the cursor, but the other is guided by lock-on radar to grant vehicles. I can't say this for sure, but I assume it is the case. The helicopter is capable of locking on to enemy tanks at 20 kilometers away and firing ATGMs at them, that which it does not even need to keep tracking. It could probably do it to, as I said in the thing, it could track four enemy targets at once. So can you fire four ATGMs at four different targets that you don't need to, need to touch the keyboard to hit or the mouse? It's not necessarily fire and forget, but it's almost there. Whenever I do show the Chrysanthema in a video, people always talk about how much they hate it. So I cannot even begin to explain how much people would hate a helicopter that has the same system. The Chrysanthema itself has quite a few setbacks. That's why it's not at 10-0. Like for one, it can't shoot and move. Another being because it's on the ground, to get a successful lock, you have to have some pretty flat terrain with no buildings or anything in the way. But we can get through bushes. This system being attached to a helicopter, the major issue of having to have flat terrain to keep a lock on the target wouldn't be there anymore because you're in the sky, a good few kilometers away from any targets. Though this does not make the helicopter a unstoppable killing machine, the Chrysanthema ATGMs are not proximity fused, so sure you could probably get a lock on a plane, and I've done that quite a few times, never actually been successful at shooting one down because you have to get a direct hit. So unlike the Cop 50s, they wouldn't exactly be masters at killing other aircraft. So if all the Gen 3 and 2 jets that were passed to developers in the beginning of this video are to imply that those are to be coming sometime soon, I really hope this doesn't imply. That would have to mean that the Mi-28 NM is also implied to be coming, which I doubt anyone is very excited for, except for those few who either GE helicopters or really love Russia. Onward to some less OP helicopters is the SH-60J Seahawk for Japan. It is, well, a US helicopter, but this is a Japanese variant, and as the name implies, it is a naval helicopter, though it only had torpedoes and light machine guns. So what exactly would they use for this be? Well, the idea is eventually we'd have boats, so modern we might as well put helicopters there, but we're not at that case yet, so I feel like this suggestion is pointless at the moment. A less pointless suggestion for Italy was the NH-90, a modern multi-world helicopter that had a lot of naval weapons, but as well as air-to-ground weaponry and rocket pods. The vehicle is very, very modern and looks pretty cool. It has also some pretty cool equipment like flares, radar, chaff, night vision, and a system to detect launched missiles. Italy could use more helicopters generally, so if this has to be added to the list, then why not? Do I think there's a more traditional helicopters that they could add? For France was the suggestion of the Eurocopter EC-635, which is essentially a armed version of a utility helicopter. Had some interesting ATGM armaments, including ones that were only 70 millimeters, and also wasn't actually used by France, but it wasn't used by any other major nation for it to be in those decades because they're, well, it's pleasant. It was like Middle Eastern nations and kind of all right helicopter didn't really pop at me as interesting in any way. I'm not sure if France really needs a new helicopter. In my view, helicopters just need some early garbage ones and then like a bunch of OP ones at the bottom. I'm not sure if this would fit either of those categories. Next up, we are to the other section. This is for not vehicle related things, starting out with maps. And the first map being suggested was the Battle of Manila in the Philippines. The suggestion is talking about a certain area called the Intermiros, or the walled area of the city, that got completely flattened from the looks of the pictures. It could be kind of interesting location as it is a urban area and has some old school Spanish architecture. Visually, it would look pretty cool, but typically areas based off historical areas aren't exactly the most balanced, and oftentimes urban combat areas don't suit a whole lot of vehicles in the game. The other one was for a South African border war in Angola, which would also be a very cool location, but much larger and they could get a little creative with it as it's not based off a historical area. Just a general region. I would be more into this one than the other one as I kind of like the expansive open maps. Not too big so you don't have to drive half an hour to get to any action, but big enough size so you're not knife fighting each other. Now onto skins, decals, and decorators. The first one is for EU, NATO, and UN flags. Now the EU and the UN, they have lame flags and suck. The NATO flag, however, that one's classy. Though it would also be kind of fun to slap a UN logo on the side of your tank and then go commit some war crimes. Then there's the suggestion for a Bulgarian MiG-29S camo. Sure, I guess. And finally, a alternative non-acrobatic team skin for the F-86 F-40, which yeah, totally. That'd be great. Please have the concern with when asking for new skins, they either end up as marketplace things or for Golden Eagles. Though, for aircraft skins, it's not really that necessary. Now, on to matchmaker economic and progression. There was only one suggestion, and while on paper, it seems like a good idea at first, but if you start to look into it, especially with some of the examples 
that he's putting forward, it's not such a great idea. It is that vehicle battle ratings increase upon unlocking critical modules. At first you're like, yeah, totally, man. I hate when I have to be facing tanks with APFSDS when I only have heat FS. But then you have to think about it, just because you only have heat FS, does that exactly mean that you're a 10-0 tank? Like take, for example, the Leo 2A5 with only heat FS. Should that really be any lower than it is currently battle rating? The issue is the battle ratings are compressed, not that some vehicles are just so bad without their modifications. Sometimes they are, but sometimes they're not. In fact, more often than not, they are not. It doesn't matter how much stuff you research, the armor values typically don't change. Like one of the examples that the author had made in response to people talking about the idea was that the stock Ferdinand would spread from 5.7 to 6.0 and then go up to 6.3 when you get the engine upgrade. Currently, my Ferdinand is not spaded. I do not have the engine upgrade and I do just fine in it at 6.3. And no circumstance does the Ferdinand need to be 5.7. Now, this was posted in 2017. I don't remember what the battle ring is back then, but it's doing fine at 6.3. And further on that, just because it does fine at 6.3 doesn't mean that when you get the engine upgrade, should it be 6.7. I don't want it to be 6.7 because I made it less slow. Sure, in some situations, it could be very helpful for various tanks, but in many situations, I could see it just being really annoying for the other guys. For the example I made, uh, Leo 2A5 being at 10.0 because he doesn't have the APFSDS. So sure, he can only hit you with those heat FS rounds, but what are you going to hit him with? Next suggestion, events also only have one, and that is for an event where there's only tanks and no aircraft. We've already done that. I think it happened like last year or something. It was kind of nice not to be 8 to GM by a helicopter. It was only for top tier things, so maybe they went for low tier things. But the situation with aircraft at low tiers and high tiers, in some situations are similar, but are very different. Obviously, this comes out of people who only play tanks and commonly want a only tank game mode. That's not going to happen for two reasons. The first one is the more obvious one, queue times. They're not going to set up a whole separate set of servers just to make it so queue times take longer. And the other one is because cast aircraft sell. There's a reason why there's a G91R4 for sale for Golden Eagles in the German tree. But if they were to run the new aircraft game mode a few more times, perhaps at different battle ranges, I think it would be fun. Especially at top tier, because while I disagree with all these people who don't want aircraft in the game, at most battle ratings at top tier, they have a very strong argument because top tier at times doesn't get very fun with the helicopters killing you from beyond rendering distance and the G91R4s murdering four tanks and then Jane out to get back in a tank or in their G91R3. And it's funny, actually, if you look at some of these G91 pilots, you notice they're not actually that good in the aircraft. But it's just so easy to get kills in the aircraft that it doesn't matter your skill level, you can successfully use the thing pretty well. Much better than any dumb bombs on lower tier aircraft. But really, this subject is deserving of its own video, even if it's a small one, because it's a very interesting subject to dive down into. So let's get on with the suggestions for gameplay. Somebody's asking for airdrop death charges, which, yeah, totally, man. I don't see why we didn't get them when we got the mines. I'm not sure if they would work on land. I think they would. And they probably have around the same explosive mass of bombs of similar size, but it'd be cool. Another one to increase the auto jump out timer for planes. This person was essentially complaining that despite his aircraft being in repairable condition, he was forced out of the aircraft because it was still critical before he could stop the aircraft fully on the runway. And personally, I think that the timer for getting you out of the plane when it's damaged and ground RV kind of dumb, but I understand why it's there. However, that also goes into the greater topic of aircraft and tank RV. But also the question is, does it necessarily really need to be increased? Because every time you increase it, there's going to be a situation where you're just a few seconds too late. And the final one was someone asking for your gun to still be stabilized when you're in commander or driver view. Personally, I see no point in this because when you switch back to gunner view, the gun is once again stabilized. And sure, the little circle is wobbling all around when you're trying to point the gun in commander view. However, the circle still ends up where your overall greater circle is. The second to last is for native voice lines to be in foreign vehicles that are in tech trees. Prime example is the Merkabas. When you use them and reload and all that stuff, the language are English, not Hebrew. And it's the same situation with the Leo C2A1. It's in German, not Canadian. So it would be a nice, I guess, immersion factor. It'd take a little extra work. He says, like, there's one Bangladeshi tank. Are we gonna go record some Bangladesh lines so that tank is more immersive? And the final one is for a siren to sound off when there are enemies in your spawn. I have a greater idea. Let's just not allow enemies in the spawn. What if we did that? And that is all the suggestions passed in December, the final suggestions of 2020. Comments, questions, thoughts, and opinions can be reached to me either in the comments or on my Discord, so be sure to hit me up either of those two places. If you liked the video, be sure to hit the like button. If you want to see more, subscribe. I want to give a big thank you to my YouTube members, patrons, as well as Twitch subs. They should be getting this video a little bit earlier than everyone else, so if you'd like to join them, there should be links down below to all of those. Thank you much for watching this video. 
I hope you enjoyed it. In the terms of bonus news, DS player claims MiG-27. I don't even know what that is, but if he's wrong, be sure to blame him.